I'm gonna use the one ingredient I'm not a huge fan of to see if I can cook something that I actually enjoy with eggplant. I'm going to make a classic Sicilian caponata, which is a relish and it's loaded with onions, capers, tomatoes, olives, and eggplant. But I'm gonna to try to use a couple procedures to get it to a place where I'm going to like it. Then we're gonna take that relish and place it on some beautiful, whole, fresh, roasted bronzino fish. First though, we're gonna start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. We are gonna start off with one white onion. You could use a yellow, sweet, or red onion here. Slice off the end, slice in half, remove that outside peel, then thinly julienne them. Set them to the side. Then next what we're gonna do is thinly slice three garlic cloves. Then I have two ribs of celery, which we are going to thinly slice on a slight angle or bias like this. Next, I have one cup or 180 grams of queso Vertrano olives. You could use regular black or green olives as well. Then I have one cup or 150 grams of cherry tomatoes, which we're simply going to slice in half and then just set everything to the side. Now you see my biggest problem with eggplant is it goes from good to mush in a matter of seconds. That's why the procedures are so important here. Outside of baba ganoush, which is literally mashed up roasted eggplant. I, I just can't do it. I'm not a fan of it. It's not good, but let's slice it up and see if we can make it good. So I've got one medium-sized young eggplant, which means you can use the peelings. And when they're big and older, the peelings are really tough and you'll definitely need to peel it. Once we slice in half, we're just gonna cut them into about one inch pieces, nice bite-sized pieces. Then I'm taking them over to a large rondeau. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of avocado oil. Turn the heat to high and get the oil to smoking. Once it's smoking, it's now time to start sauteing. So add in those eggplant and spread them around the pan to cover as much surface area as possible because we wanna make sure these get nice and crispy brown. Remember, no mushy or soggy eggplant. This is honestly only going to cook for about a minute or two to get browned up like this. That one is perfect in the center. Then we're just gonna set them to the side on paper towels to let them drain off any excess oil. See how this is still firm and brown? Perfect. And yes, of course I would use olive oil. This is a classical Sicilian dish. However, avocado oil has a very high smoking point of 520 degrees Fahrenheit or 271 degrees Celsius. That means I can get a quick sear on it, get browned very fast, and then I'm done. If I'm doing it in olive oil, it's going to get brown, but it's gonna take longer to cook, which means it's gonna get mushy, and I don't want that. All right, let's add a few more things in the pan, beginning with olive oil. We're going to add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of olive oil. Turn the heat down to medium. Then at this point, we're gonna add in those julienne onions, followed up with the thinly sliced celery. What we're gonna do is saute this for about eight to 10 minutes. We're not looking for a full caramelization, but we do want them to be nice and browned up just like this. All right, excellent. At this stage, we're going to add in that thinly sliced garlic. And remember, once you smell garlic, it's done cooking. So we're talking 45 to 60 seconds. Then let's add in these sliced olives, then two tablespoons or 15 grams of capers. Mix that in. Then at this stage, we're going to add in two thirds cup or 227 grams of white wine vinegar. You could use distilled vinegar as well. Then we are going to add in two tablespoons or 13 grams of granulated sugar. It's gonna help offset a lot of that vinegar flavor. Then I have one cup or 242 grams of crushed tomatoes. You can use homemade canned or peeled and crushed. You be the judge here. Now I'm going to add in two heaping tablespoons or 35 grams of tomato paste. Let's mix it in until combined. You'll notice it starts to get thick, perfect. Let's finish with those fresh sliced cherry tomatoes. Add back in our eggplant. Then to finish it off, what we're gonna do is add in two tablespoons or about three grams of chopped fresh basil. Season up with salt and pepper, mix it in. And of course, let's try this out real quick. Well, I mean, you know, It's got some really nice flavors. It's almost like, I don't even want to admit this, it's almost like the eggplant makes this. It's good, the vinegar, the sugar, all those flavors are really good. Uh, my grandma used to make this. My aunt still makes it. They call it gavanadina, and they would put it on crackers and serve it that way, and they would also can it and jar it. But this, this is gonna be really good in that fish, so let's get to it. I have three fresh whole one to one and a quarter pounds or 454 to 567 grams of Branzino. You know it's fresh when the eyes are bulging and not sunken in. Perfect. 
This is also known as Mediterranean or European sea bass. Really mild in flavor, slightly sweet whitefish. No matter the cuisine, honestly, you can throw whatever you want at it and it's gonna go well with it. You can also purchase it whole or in fillets. Ask the store to fillet it out if you want it. This runs about 12 to 15 bucks per pound, so it's not horribly expensive. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways, how to oven roast it whole and how to pan roast it whole. Here we go. Dr. Chef Parisi in the house. What we're gonna do is transfer the bronzino to a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Then using a chef knife, we wanna make three slices on a bias. Do not go too deep, maybe a quarter to a half inch thick. Now we're doing this on both sides to ensure that the fish lays flat when it cooks and doesn't curl up. All right, perfect. Then grab a big handful of paper towels and we are gonna blot it dry very well on both sides in the inside cavity to make sure that it browns up beautifully. Now, generously brush olive oil on both sides, on the outside and the inside cavity again. No measurement here, just make sure it's completely coated. Then what we wanna do is generously season all sides again with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Don't forget the inside of that bronzino, incredibly important in there. I just have three thin slices of fresh lemon. Then I have one to two sprigs of fresh thyme. Both of these are just gonna add some really nice flavors in there when it roasts. We are going in the oven on the middle or upper rack at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. Now for the pan seared version of bronzino, just like the other one, pat it dry on all sides. Give it three nice little slices on a bias there. Season it well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Then what we're gonna do is go over to a cooktop. I have a large nonstick frying pan. I'm going to add in four tablespoons or 60 grams of olive oil. I'm going to crank the heat up to high. Once it begins to smoke, we're good to add in the fish. So transfer it right into the pan with the oil. Then we're going to immediately add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of unsalted butter. After only about three to four minutes, we're gonna give it a flip. See how perfectly crispy brown that skin is, excellent. Once we flip it, we're going to immediately start to baste it to crisp up that skin a little bit more and cook it for a further three to four minutes or until it's finished cooking and browned all around. All right, my dear commies, my chefs in training out there, all about those techniques, making sure that fish is really, really dry before you put the oil on it. That ensures that that skin will be extra crispy. Now for me, I always gravitate towards that pan sear because it's extra crispy. I love that skin like that. But you be the judge because guess what? The other one in the oven has lemon and thyme in there, so there's more flavors flowing through that one as well. Again, totally up to you. Let me show you how to plate this up. I am going to serve this on a large platter. Now you can serve both versions of them on a platter, totally up to you. Then let's generously add on that caponata or gabonadina all over the top and around the outside. Then what you can do, optional here, garnish with fresh chopped basil or parsley. The Bronzino, so easy to cook, so tasty. I think you and your family are really gonna like this. Now, I may not be a full-blown convert yet with the eggplant, but it's wearing on me because this caponata is super tasty. Now, if you love this dish, you're absolutely going to love my halibut. I've got three different sauces, an awesome recipe video. Check it out, I'll see you on there.